Hey, welcome. It's time for Atomic Radio Hour. Episode 176. How are you? I hope you're well. It's me, as usual, your host, Vince, and I'm also here with, in the background, want to pop in and say hi, Papa? Hello. Hi, Papa. <laughs> Kyle's, uh, Kyle's doing as usual, producing thing. Uh, he'll be back towards the 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 back nine of the episode we have some stuff that we want to talk about together i hope you're well i hope everything's going fine for you i uh had a pretty average week i'm actually like super excited because uh i have some things that i've been looking forward to that are going to happen the week the week that this episode uh well the week after this episode comes out that week because i guess sunday is the first day even whatever um but I do have something planned very, very special for that week of Thanksgiving for you guys that Kyle and I have worked on. Um, I'm going to start editing it on Monday, and it'll be out as episode 177 for you. But some shit happened that we got to talk about. Now, it's no secret here in these parts that I love the original 3D era of Grand Theft Auto. San Andreas being my favorite. And I had bought myself, you know... I'm a good boy. I get off the Mighty Kids menu. I clean up after myself. I pay my taxes on time. Bought myself a Xbox Series X, and I got the package that comes with Game Pass and what have you. So when the definitive edition of Grand Theft Auto got announced, and I was very excited, and I talked about it here. That's an Instagram video that I don't know why it's playing. Sorry. (laughs) Uh, When it got announced, I was super excited. And I was very much ready for this. I saw some things the day of, day before, that didn't make it look great. This is like, I was editing when this came out, and I stopped editing early so I could play this for like an hour. Maybe a little more, a little less. All the cheat codes still work. Uh, It feels the same, but like doesn't. It feels like a shiny version of, of San Andreas. But there's a lot wrong with it. So according to GameSpot, this is from this is from a couple days ago, and as far as I know, this has been fixed. But you couldn't play the definitive edition on PC if you bought it, and they had gotten rid of a bunch of other versions that were on digital platforms. So you couldn't play the original version. Well, it's not even the original. I'm pretty sure that it's a port of the mobile version, but Grove Street Games is a mobile developer. And they're the people who were doing the the um, the the definitive edition. But there was a point that right here, it's been updated. But it says Rockstar's GTA trilogy, the definitive edition, has been pulled from the from Rockstar's game launcher, which is the only place you could buy the game on PC. There's a few places, a few people that I follow on Twitter that were like, "I just bought this and I can't play it," and uh, that's upsetting for many a reason. I feel like I shouldn't have to explain why. Yeah, it's back. It works again. But, like, there's, like, little things, uh, which I spoke about last last week. Like, smoke hold... Do- or smoke. Sweet doesn't hold his gun properly. People don't, like, phase in with the graphics. It's just a lot of, like, horse shit that, like, doesn't need to happen that's happening. They should have waited longer. There was a huge thing that... This is from, I don't even have the Twitter user, so, I'm, so I apologize, but it says, uh, the, the quote is, Oh God, they used AI to upscale the signs in the GTA remasters, so a lot of classic jokes are lost because the algorithm just guessed. They didn't even check. Guitar wank gu- becomes guitar hank, H-E-N-K, and air guitar becomes AR guitar. Uh, there's also, I don't think I have a picture of it here in my notes, but there's also, <laughs> there's also the, the welcome sign that says welcome to vice city doesn't have an E at the end of it. So it says like welcome without an E there's a bunch of little shit. Um, but like the whole thing is it doesn't like, it feels like Grand Theft Auto, but it doesn't feel like Grand Theft Auto. Like it feels good. Like I'm playing it and I'm like, Ah, uh, this is my this is my one of my favorite games ever, but like it's not. The render distance is great, like you can change all the shit and you can do everything, but like it still plays like a game from 2004. But like the driving's a little better and the gra- like but like CJ looks really weird, and I I really think GTA 3 is the one that benefited the most from 
the the upgrades, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I want to see it do better. I there's a physical cop edition coming out in December. Hopefully by then on the hard copies, either with a day one patch or something, it'll be fixed and it'll be more playable. I actually kind of wanted to get it for the Switch because I could play it with a GameCube controller. And because why not have San Andreas on the go? But other than that, I don't know. It's it's fun to get back in there and play it. It's fun to do little shit like go to the gym with CJ and like work out and put in those cheats. And like, I still kind of remember them. R1, R2, L1, R2, up up left down right up left down right is uh like a weapons code i I haven't done the jetpack yet which is surprising to me because that's like i'm surprised i didn't just do that first but uh i don't know if you guys watch netflix i know a lot of people have left left left, have left netflix for various reasons but uh i never use it i pay for my family's account and i just never go on it uh, once they ended BoJack Horseman, I was like, ah, I don't need to be here any, any longer. But uh, they have this show called Big Mouth that I'm pretty sure everybody's aware of. <laughs> did, did you just make that noise? No, my <laughs> mic fell, so... <laughs> oh. uh, they have this this show called Big Mouth, and it's it's atrocious. Like, the first... I've noticed this trend that, like, the first, like, three to four episodes are just how much offensive shit we can get, like, stuffed into the... Like, Kyle, who's the, the Indian fella from uh, The Eternals? Uh, uh, I think his name is... Kamal? Ra- yeah. Kamal... N- I'm going to say it wrong, but I know his first name was Kamal. <sighs> There's, like, an the first episode is about No Nut November and how Kamal Eternals Man doesn't masturbate. And that's how he got as big as he was for the movie. And then there's a version of him that shows up later whose name is Cum Ale. And he's made of semen. This is the first episode of the fifth season. I'm watching this like out of out of spite. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I want to see how bad it could really be. And I like John Mulaney a lot. So like I want to watch it. And I think Nick Kroll is a is a rather talented guy. They have Oh Hello, Oh Hello on Netflix. It, watch that, and you'll understand like what I mean. But like, it's not good. <laughs> and like, I have no other way to describe it other than it's just it's just like something like a neat idea will show up, and then they'll just kind of forget about it. Or the excuse is, oh, it's little kids saying the fuck word. But, like, there's 1,500 characters in this show. And as soon as you learn, like, what one character does, they just bring another one out. And it's like, oh, my God, give me give me ten and a half minutes to, like, understand what this character does. There's a character that gets introduced that's, like, a hate worm. That's the, the character's name is the hate worm. The hate worm. Kyle, I might be having a stroke. Really? I smell something, and I don't know if it's toast. <laughs> it's talking about this show. Uh, like, they introduce this character called the Hate Worm, and then, like, I don't know, I fell asleep during the episode, but, like, nobody else has the Hate Worm, but, like, certain people can see these, like, visions of sugar plums that just pop into their head of, like, these characters. And, like, I get it. They're kids, and they're, like, 11, 11 plus 1, 13 years old, trying to figure out, like, who they are as people and shit. But this constant just sexual referencing. So watch it. Give give it a watch. Seriously. Like, if you just want to sit down and be like, how bad could it be? See how far you can get. Because I'm on season five. And I've been watching it, like, as it comes out. So, please, like, let me know. Join the Discord. Link in the description to the Discord. Join the Discord and let me know what you think of this show. Okay, so some good news, some really, really great stuff. Kyle, if you want to chime in for this one, please feel free. Absolutely. Uh, Halo Infinite's like beta online came out for everybody, so you didn't just have to be in the beta to play it. Uh, Kyle, what do you think of it? Uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, when we, Are you still playing it? I haven't been on today, uh, but mm-hmm. when I loaded up yesterday and just hearing the music and just like, whew. Like, I, I was telling our friend Lou, uh, 
Like Gun I'm Lou. like I can't believe we're playing this right now. Yeah. Yeah, I can't believe that we're like excited to play it. Like it's the first time since Reach that I can remember being like really excited for a Halo game. My my only real gripe with it so far is the AI voices constantly talk. And someone I work with, we were talking about playing it and he's and he was telling me that he had played it. Uh he showed me that like one of the directors of the the game or like the online experience, I forget the guy's name that he showed me for for it's 343, right? Yes. Yeah, one of those guys, he um he like addressed that people had said that the AIs were too annoying. So it's going to get taken care of. There's something that they're rebalancing the XP for the season pass, which is great. Yes, it seemed like it was going a little bit slow. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. It's The pistol feels really nice. The pistol feels good. I love the customization. There's so much to it in this. Really? Yeah. I just feel like, like it's a little lacking. But it's well, just me. I mean, there, it's lacking because there's not a lot of choices at the moment. Mm-hmm. You know, some of the, you get stuff from season pass, but like... Uh, like be able to change your color, your different pieces on your armor. You know, you have a prosthetic on, or just a hand that's prosthetic, or a leg. Yeah. And like your stances, your poses. You know, like. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's really cool. Like your guns, you can put stickers on them and charms. I and like that. that. Yeah. And you see, so with your your vehicles, you can change the color of the vehicles too. And yeah, I have all my vehicles as the cu- the classic ones. Mm-hmm. So my question is, does that change it for just my screen or your screen too? I have a feeling it probably just changes it for your screen. But still, it's cool. But the guns change because I picked up somebody's pistol and it had a little charm on it. Nice. So I know that changes. But it'd be cool if like you jump in the car and then it changes and then somebody mm-hmm. else gets into it. But it's it's fun. Like I don't really have much to say about it because we only played about maybe an hour and a half, two hours of it. And I think 30 minutes of that was with bots. Yes, I don't. I'm I'm not big on the game selection they gave us, but it's also a beta, so I'm not too upset. Um, like they have captured the flag. I, we played a lot of oddball, and I'm not huge on oddball to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Slayer feels fine. The maps, some of the maps feel really good, but some of the maps feel a little too big. Yeah, like that that city map. That's the. It reminds me of Counter Strike because oh. it has that door open. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. That it's map, like yeah, a deserty yeah, one. That I was like, is this a Counter Strike map? I was looking at it too. I uh, yeah, yeah. That felt. That, I didn't like that map as much. I love the. You uh, really? I, I lo- love that map. I like that's my the, favorite uh, one. The one that's like a uh, Avery, a Avery, Avery Johnson like medical facility or whatever map that we played on. I don't think I played that one. It was it's a small one. I don't. I can't explain maps. <laughs> No, I played that one, and then, then there's the city one, and then there's Valhalla. Mm-hmm. And I got to use the grappling hook on Valhalla. I stole the brute chopper from somebody and then instantly died, and I wasn't even upset because I used a grappling hook. But yeah, that's – I mean, we're going to talk about this more later because Kyle and I have been replaying through the Halo games as John Halo and his partner, John Halo. And – uh, we're on Halo 2 at probably, like, the worst part where you just can't walk three feet without being sniped. Oh, and we, Halo we 2, probably didn't hit the worst part. Oh, <laughs> really? Honest, we probably did not hit the worst part. I, this is – Kyle, this makes me, like, the part that we're at now because you load in. I just don't understand why if one person dies, everything has to start over. That's that, it it's probably not the worst part. That's what bothers me. Like, that makes me want to wipe my ass with sandpaper. <laughs> like, it's just – like, because Halo 1 didn't do it, and I don't think Halo 3 is like that. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it might I don't be, remember. but we'll see. Go oh, well, you don't play on Legendary most of the time, so, you know. Well, yeah. Still. And if you do, it, it's probably not co-op. Like, I'm trying to think of playing Halo 3. I can't even remember playing Halo 3. I can't even remember playing Halo 3. I think I heard uh, it was. Multiplayer people. That it's the same as 2? Yeah. Fuck, it sucks. We're playing on Legendary. Yes. That's why we have to respawn. That's why I don't feel like I made that apparent. Side note, just because I'm looking at my notes real quick. Apparently, the definitive edition of Grand Theft Auto has the code in the game for the hot coffee stuff. And for those who don't know, San Andreas was like pulled from shelves and giving it given an AO rating. And there's like a version two that came out because they removed that shit 
that there, you're supposed to have, like play a mini game where you have sex with CJ's girlfriend. And people modded it so you could actually do it. It's a huge thing. I'm surprised like people don't know about it. Kyle, that's that's wild to think about. That we're at a point where people don't remember hot coffee. I remember being in a GameStop and talking to some kid and his mom was like buying him games. And his mom was like, I don't care what my kid plays. As long as it's not Grand Theft Auto, I don't need him having sex in a video game or something. Like, that's wild. Yeah, so apparently that's still there. So, like, they just didn't do anything. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to talk about Saints Row. Uh, you know what? I'll say it real quick. Saints Row got delayed, and they're, the Saints in this game, their color is blue, and that'll never not bother No, they're me. purple. What? It's purple. What you, I thought yeah. it was blue. No. The, in the new Saints? Yeah, the logo is, like, blue, but, like, they're wearing purple stuff. If It's still being made by Volition. Yeah. I'd like to see it be good, but you know, it what what we saw already seems like it was lacking a lot of what made Saints Row Saints Row. Mm-hmm. All right, I think it's time that we jump into the lore. Um, but before we get into the lore, we have to thank the Patreon. To thank the Patreon, real quick, thank you guys because of you, uh, we can continue to do the show. Uh, Kyle is on a special satellite that it was given him to, by the government so he could call from the jungles of the Neo-Vietnam conflict and we can continue to do the show. Uh, it's also just really nice to know that people support. So starting from the tippity top, we have to thank the OG himself, Noah. Thank you, Noah. After Noah, we have to thank Danny. Thank you, Danny. After Danny, it's Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. And then last but certainly not least, we have to thank Bones Jones. Thank you, Bones Jones. And again, I appreciate you all. I love you all. It's nice to know that somebody cares and is watching and is listening and is thinking of us. But that being said, it's time for us to get into the lore for this week. Now, uh, granted, I have some things coming up in the week um, that I'm super excited about. This week was kind of all, I was a little all over the place too. Some personal stuff, some fun stuff. Um, and I forgot to ask the Discord a question on Tuesday. So today I just jumped in quick. I was like, guys, I'm thinking of an article of clothing. And no one is yet to guess it as of the recording of this. Meaning I picked out lore, something I wanted to go back to the past, uh, to something a little older. I feel like we've been kind of keeping up in more of the contemporary space from three onward. And I wanted to visit something classic. If you're watching this, uh, there's a good chance that the lore has been picked out for the next episode that I sit down and record live like this, because whoever gets that is just going to get it for next week or the following week, whichever episode I'm back here doing this um, in a regular sense. But this week's lore, if you want to hear any lore, if you want to hear any lore whatsoever, make sure you're in the Discord because Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of any given week, I will ask a question and the first person to get the question right gets to pick the lore for the week. Now, this week's lore is on Eridesh. Like I said, I wanted to kind of go back and I don't think I've ever talked about Eridesh. If I have, it's super early on and I have to redo most of that lore anyway. I have to clip it out and put it somewhere. I've been, I actually have like eight or nine videos worth of lore that have to go out from like when Olive and I had first started the show. I want to say there's maybe a, anywhere from nine to 11 videos that I have edited and ready to rock. Uh, but Eridesh, the leader of Shady Sands, founded by him in 2142 and is the father of Tandy. He's the founder and the first president of the NCR. Now, I get all of my lore off of fallout.fandom.com, and the wiki uh, describes him as an honest man who cares deeply for the citizens of Shady Sands and the NCR. Originally from Vault 15, now, I didn't know this, uh... I didn't realize that, I mean, I knew early on they had ideas for the social experiments because in the Fallout Bible, they're there. And uh, Necropolis is built out of a vault that the door didn't shut all the way. But Vault 15, the social experiment was to have people of very diverse cultures all inside. And I never really thought about it till I was doing this. When you meet Eridesh for the first time, one, that's a cool name. It's obviously not something that, like, it's not a Bob Johnson. Like, it's not some normal, everyday, average white people shit. He has an accent. And this is also, this is also 60-some years 
after the bombs have dropped. So he was probably raised by somebody in his vault that had an accent, surrounded by people with accents. So the fact that he has a different twang or twinge in his voice, I really like that small little detail. Whether it was done on purpose or not, I enjoy it. But like I said, he comes from Vault 15, which in, in the wiki is even described as Vault 13's sister vault. But after a horrendous raider attack, he left the vault looking for a new place to live. Now in 2142, uh, he assembled a small yet humble community of settlers, and he used a geck to start up Shady Sands. He leads the town with a steady hand even if he has instilled some xenophobic attitudes to the town folk, which I think is completely reasonable and understandable. He's used to the safety and the comfort of a vault. So now that he's out in the wastes and maybe something like a, a scorpion that he's only ever seen a picture of, he gets out here and a scorpion is maybe the length of my, my middle finger to my thumb, like six, seven inches, like not much. Like the, the uh, what is it called? Kyle, what's it called, the, the length of your palm? Is there a name for that? Uh, I don't know. You know how like your wing, your your wings, your arms from, from middle finger to middle finger is your wingspan? No? Okay, no. well, whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking maybe like, maybe like, I don't know, like you, you're used to seeing a picture of a scorpion and it's, this big and you walk outside and it's five and a half feet long longer with the tail because the tail curls up and like why wouldn't you be sheltered but because of the geck they can they can have uh, irrigation they can grow crops they have the walls of shady sands even when he first meets the the vault dweller he's very reserved after the vault dweller took care of shady sands rad scorpion problem and saved Tandy from the cons, he opened the community, leading to more expansion in the future of the NCR. He, along with Seth and Tandy, would later go on to find the found, the NCR. I believe it's, let's find out together, shall we? But I believe it's 10 years after the game ends. I typed in NCR history. NCR was founded in Dayton, Ohio in 1884 and acquired by AT&T in 1991. Hold on. They're, they make registers and whatnot. This says on the wiki for the New California Republic, a uh, trial council government formed in 2186, voted as, as, voted as official republic in 2189 under the leadership of Eridesh. So 40 years after Shady Sands was founded, he went on to uh, start. And I, I think I've done an episode on Tandy. I'm pretty sure I have. Uh, and she goes on to be president for, like, her entire lifetime. And uh, there's actually one of my favorite lines of dialogue in New Vegas is when you ask Caesar why he doesn't like the NCR. He's like, because they say that I'm a tyrant, but their president served for her entire life. It's not a president. It's not a dictatorship. After the events of Fallout 1, inspired by the Vault Dweller, Aradesh and Seth began looking for Vault 13 in search of the Vault Dweller. They disappeared and then were proclaimed dead. That's really all there is on Aradesh. Let me just double check to make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, there's really not much. He's he's uh, one of the first characters that you meet in the game that isn't uh, a Dweller, isn't uh, Jacarin, Jorserin. And he's the first character that you meet that is a, ta a talking head character. And I don't know if I've ever said it on here before, and I think a lot of people that know the early Fallout games already know, but these were, these talking heads were made out of clay, and they're like stop motion. There's a picture of Eridesh on screen, most likely. So you'll see him if you're watching on YouTube. You can, you can do a, a thing called Tell Me, Tell Me About in, in the first Fallout game. Um, which is really cool because you can say, you can say like one line things to him. You can say to him, uh, one line, there's actually no spaces, like spaces don't work in the tell me about feature of Fallout 1. So you can say something like Aradesh and he'll say, I am he, I lead this humble town of Shady Sands. If you ask him about the hub, he says, go talk to Seth about that. He'll know more than I. If you ask him about his daughter... Where is it? Tandy. He, he says, she is my daughter. It is she that makes this hard life worth living. Uh, if you ask him about 
the vipers, he'll say, be careful with such as these raiders who are fanatically religious can be quite dangerous. No one knows here. Wait, no one here knows of their base. Sorry, it's very, very small text. Uh, then there's one that says Junktown. Junktown lies south of here. Their merchant occasionally comes to trade, but not often. A fort in the American Southwest named after Aradesh mentioned by Ulysses during the courier's trek through the Divide. Uh, and then just for like on the wiki, it says appearances. He's also on the $5 bill. There's, there's absolutely a picture of the $5 bill and one of the water. I believe it's the water fountain or maybe it's a mill. I think it might be a mill. It's, it's a loading screen for fallout one. It's like the loading screen when, when you look at shady sands, um, he's on the $5 bill. Aradesh appears in fallout as a talking head. He is mentioned by Tandy in fallout two and appears on the $5 NCR bill. He's also mentioned by Caesar in Fallout New Vegas and in Fallout 4 on the radio broadcast while exploring Conrad Kellogg's memories. Carl, you have anything you want to say about Aradesh? He's a cool guy. <laughs> Thanks for playing along, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's actually like the end of this, this lore book, too. This is episode 135 to 176. Um... I'm going to take a swig of this water real quick, and then Kyle and I... Oh, that's Lore. And then Kyle and I are going to get into the next topic. So, Kyle. Yes. You there, pal? Mm-hmm. This is one of my favorite times of the year when it comes to games. Uh, this in June, because June is like, here's all the cool shit we're going to get in three yeah. years. And I get to feel like a little kid again watching E3. Oh, Kyle! Kyle! Kyle, G4 is back. Yeah. You think... You think we're gonna be able to get, watch like Kevin Pereira and Adam Adam Sessler like cover E3 again? I don't know. Oh, dude. Okay, G4 is back. Uh, I wanted to talk about that. And I totally forgot. G4 is back, and I have no way to watch it. Ba bow. So I think it's, they're doing. I um, think they stream them. I think they do like Attack of the Show. They do it on Twitch. So they'll have it on TV, but also on Twitch, because I know that's kind of what um, Viceland does. Like Viceland has everything they put on YouTube on TV, but then they also have it where like only some of the stuff is on the we on YouTube. So I have a feeling that's they're gonna do like maybe half of Attack of the Show and like the reviews from X Play, but not everything. Yeah. And hopefully they can strike up a deal with like uh, Hulu, so you can like stream all of their stuff there, dude. I'd watch, I'd watch every episode of X Play. Like every day, I'd come home from work and put it on. I'm mm -hmm. so excited it's back. But Kyle, it's that time of the year again. It is the second. It's it's the time where we sit back and we go, what came out, what was good, what wasn't, and what accolades does it deserve? You sent me the list for the Game Awards, and what is going to be? What do you mean? What's going to be shown? Oh, you mean like teasers and shit? Yeah. You think we're going to see anything about Starfield? Uh, no. Okay. No, I don't think we'll see Starfield stuff there. Uh, it's usually like stuff that I <laughs> it, stuff that people want to see. <laughs> like not the, the people you... who don't want to see Starfield, but it's not like, oh man, that's Starfield. I got to see that gameplay other than like we got to see the Elden Ring gameplay, you know? Okay, yeah, I guess. I, I forget that, like, Elden Ring exists because I'm just not, like, in that universe of, like, From Games or From Soft Games and, like, I don't care about George R. R. Martin. There's oh? currently a uh, dragon that I'm trying to poison with poison arrow that is slowly ticking down and it's taking forever in the background of this recording. What are you playing? Demon Souls. Oh, are you really? Yes. <sighs> All right, so do you have the list near you, or... Uh, I think we should just go and start voting. I have to sign in. Oh, you have to sign in for us? Yeah, I have to sign in to vote, because I'm oh, on my I phone. Didn't. Really? Yeah, oh yeah, sign in to vote. All right, so Game of the Year comes down to Deathloop, It Takes Two, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts 2, uh, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and Resident Evil Village. Now, before we say what we want to vote for... Let's talk about these these entries a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think the two that are in the running for most likely to get it are Metroid Dread and Resident Evil Village. 
it takes two. I've watched a, like a streamer play a little bit of it, and it seemed like a neat experience, but a lot of it kind of seemed like you. It was. I don't. I feel like a lot of people don't like co-op games. Right. You know what I mean. Death Loop didn't come out great, if I remember correctly. It was super glitchy. I I don't know. I bought that. I didn't play it yet, but I heard it's mm-hmm. pretty good. You're also getting it not day one. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm you know also what I mean? So going like, to be playing on PS5. Yeah, but there's a huge group of people that, well, I think you can't play it on PS4, can you? Yeah. You can? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, but it's also, just played Sony exclusive for a year, I think. No shit. Well, also, think about, like, how many people buy a game the first week it comes out and it doesn't perform and then they just never touch it again. Yeah. Ratchet and Clank is the only exclusive here. No, I lie to you. So is Deathloop. The only exclusive that will remain exclusive. I think Deathloop and Ratchet and Clank, as great as ever, everyone said Ratchet and Clank was like an, a solid 8 out of 10. Uh, no, that's definitely a 10 out of 10 game. I'm sorry. Really? I think that's going to be, uh, uh, Resident Evil. Really? Yeah. Ratchet and Clank was amazing. Good shit. Okay. I want Psychonauts 2 to take it. I, I wouldn't that's mind That's my it. vote. I wouldn't mind That's it. my vote. I, I hope they do because Psychonauts, especially Psychonauts 2, um, that is a game that is just filled with love. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. just so much, there's so much thought and care. And uh, even when you boot the game up, it says this is a game about empathy and about healing. And like, I just, I like that. I like those themes. I hope somebody played that game and said, you know, maybe therapy is for me. So I, know, I'm voting. You know what I'm excited for though? What? We get to hear its theme in orchestra. Psychonauts? Yeah, every all the, every time at the Game Awards they play the game theme with the uh, Game Awards orchestra. Get the fuck. Okay, I've never noticed, yep. but that's good to hear. Um, also, Kyle, while we're here, and I feel like I will not have a chance to tell you this again, you know that song in GTA Online, and so it goes, and so it goes, and so it goes, and so it goes. That song? Uh, maybe. It's on Cult. I don't know. Well, next time we play, there's one part that sounds like the camp music from Psychonauts 1. Huh. All right, so I'm voting for Psychonauts. Who are you voting for? I'm going to have to vote for Ratchet and Clank on that. Good shit. The next one is uh, Best Game Direction. Being Deathloop, It Takes Two, Returnal, Psychonauts 2, and Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart. I just I just sung the praises of Psychonauts too, so I think you know who I'm going with. Yeah. Especially like I don't recall hearing any crunch done for that game. Damn, there's just the same shit constantly. Did like nothing come out this year? Not really, no. <laughs> Best narrative, Death Loop, it takes two, Life is Strange, True Colors, Marvel's Guard that came out? That is a amazing game. I love Guardians, that game. Guardians, really? Absolutely, yeah. I didn't even know it came out. Yeah, it did. That, uh, and Psychonauts last month. Really? Best narrative. Uh, I love Psychonauts, but like Marvel's Guardians just captivated really? me. Really? Yeah. Okay. Psychonauts 2, uh, for me, gets the award. And in the Kyle and Vince, which, trust me, it's coming out. I have a Kyle. Uh, <laughs> it's actually, I think we recorded it at my old place. So, like, I can't wait to, wa- like, edit that. At, but whatever. Um, Psychonauts 2 has a moment in it where I just kind of cried a lot because like it was so well thought out and very um like pulls at your heart so again three three in a row i'm going for psychonauts best art direction <laughs> the artful escape death loop kira oh Ken- kenna Br- i didn't even know that came out either psychonauts 2 yep. and ratchet and clank that game did so well <laughs> they made double their money back on making that game Get the fuck out of here, yep. really? Yep. I, I didn't play anything on here except for Psychonauts. Uh, um, I saw Escapes on Game Pass. I remember seeing this game like years ago, and it's like, I really want to play this, and I remember just downloading it. I'm going to have to give it to Psychonauts on this one. Because just of mm-hmm. how different the worlds are. Artful Escape looks like a girl with short hair and glasses. The guy. It's a guy? Yeah, he's like a... That's a man? Rock star... 
That's not a woman. That's a man, yeah. Kyle, I'm going to talk to my therapist. Uh, yeah, I, I, Psychonauts, I really want to see... Can I get it, Kina? Just because of that game looked neat, but like the only game I played was Psychonauts on here, so I'm going to go with them. Four in a row. Oh, this is the first one that doesn't have it. Best music score, Artful Escape, Cyberpunk, Deathloop, Marvel, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Near Replicant version. Is this the real fucking name? Yeah, that's the real name. They He did that on purpose because of that. <laughs> yeah. Version 1.22474487139. I'm going for Marvel because that had amazing soundtrack to it. They had their own rock band they made for the game. Really? Yeah. And plus it had all like <sighs> old songs that had like Iran and like uh, uh, Kiss and like I keep blanking on it had good 80s rock and stuff like that and like you know really good. My laptop has not been plugged in this whole time. Oh boy. It's good. It's still recording. It's just on half battery now. I um you're gonna get upset when I say this. I don't think about I don't think about the music in the games in games a lot. Very rarely does the mu to me the music is always just kind of there. Like I don't think yeah good or yeah bad. I don't know why. I just never really have. It makes makes the game. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I I mean I don't I don't know any of these. I'm gonna have to skip this one because I just don't know. Like, I want to give it to Near Replicant because it's got a dumb name, but, like, I'm just going to skip this one. Best audio design? Deathloop. Oh, f- uh, f- Jesus Christ. Forza? Forza Horizon. I kept wanting to switch the H and the F in that word. Ratchet and Clank, Returnal, and Resident Evil. If Resident Evil, I've tried to stay as away from Resident Evil as possible, but if it's anything like Resi 5 was, or I'm sorry, Resi 6 was, Biohazard. With the way, like, the house creaks and shit, I'd give it to them. But, like, I can't really say anything because I didn't play these games. Audrey's I'm going to have to go Ratchet and Clank because of the guns. Really? Yep. What's your favorite gun in Ratchet and Clank? Uh, the, the, me- uh, oh, what's it called? It's the one you, the Rhino. Uh, the Rhino actually teleports mm. uh, items from other video games like Sly Cooper, yes. Jack and Dexter, the Jeep from Uncharted. Whatever happened with the Sly Cooper show? Uh, I don't know. It's in the works. Supposedly, there is Sly Cooper to be rumored coming soon. Uh, really? Maybe Game Awards. Who knows? Ooh. Best performance. Uh, Erica Moore. Mori as, uh, no, that's more as Alex Chen in Life is Strange. Jo- Giancarlo Esposito as Anton Castillo in Far Cry 6, the bad guy. Jason Kelly as Colt Van in Deathloop. Maggie Robinson as Lady... Uh, how do you say her name? Demi- Demetrius? Demetrius? In Resi, Resi Village. And... Jesus, I can't read. Omazu Ageha, Agaha as Julian Blake in Deathloop. Uh, I think Gus from Breaking Bad is going to get this. I don't know her, between him or uh, Maggie. Really? Yeah, you don't know how big Death, uh, Resident Evil Village I know. was. It, it was I big. Know. I'm trying to stay out of it because I like Six so much, and I do, and I don't. Well, I have Next Gen now. Maybe I'll buy it. Is it on Game Pass? I doubt it. Oh, I doubt it. Uh, maybe I'll get it. Games for Impact. What the fuck does that mean? Like uh, they had a impactful like story and stuff like that to them before your eyes boyfriend dungeon i never played any of these so i can't tell chicory a colorful tale life is strange and no longer home no longer home it shows a guy petting a cat uh i'm going with that one but i i, I didn't even know half these games existed best ongoing series Apex Legend, Final Fantasy Online, Fortnite, Fortnite, Genshin Impact, and Call of Duty Warzone. Kyle, what say you? Uh, I'm a little mad that Destiny's not on here. Um, oh, shit, yeah. But uh, I'm not giving Call of Duty any of my money or Genshin Impact. So uh, I, uh, Final Fantasy is probably going to win it. Yeah, that's what I'm th- Final Fantasy Online is huge. 
Yeah, I'll, I'm with you. Best indie, 12 minutes, Death's Door. Dude, how do you say these names? In- inscription. Secre- inscri- that's Inscription. Okay. Uh, Kina, the Bridge Kenya. of Spirits. What'd I say? Kina. That's not Kina? Kenya. Okay, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, and Loop Hero. I uh, already voted for Inscription. Really? It is a weird ass card based game, but like there's mm-hmm. like a weird, unique story in it. And it's weird. I love it. Cool. I'd like to see Kenna just because girl yeah. protagonist, but I didn't play them, so I can't really say. Best mobile? Jesus. What is this called? Fantasane? Yeah. How do you say that? Fantasane? Fantasian. Fantasian. Fantasian? Fantasian. I hate the English language. Fantasian, Genshin Impact, League of Legends, Wild Rift, Marvel Future Revolution, Pokemon Unite. I'm not even, like, I'm not even here. This is one that Verizon <laughs> paid for so Verizon could have advertisement, and by me even saying their name proves that 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 worked for them. Do you have any you want to chime uh, in at all I don't with know. us? I just, I just picked the Pokemon one. <laughs> yeah. Best community support apex legends <laughs> destiny 2 final fantasy online fortnite and no man's sky i think you and i are gonna pick no you're probably gonna nope i have a feeling you're gonna say different from what i'm gonna say well i picked destiny but i know it's not true because the community sucks ass really then why'd you vote for it because i enjoy it oh. uh, i think uh, no man's sky is gonna destiny get it community just because is just, probably yeah Destiny 2's community is because how they're vaulting stuff, people are comparing it to like Final Fantasy and World of Warcraft don't vault some of their content. And it's like, yeah, but this they're game is like games. something gigabytes like Call of Duty is like, no one plays half the stuff. Why keep it in? Yeah. And just people have a hissy fit about that. Well, this is, this is support. This isn't just the community yeah, itself. I mean, yeah. I, I, think, I think No Man's Sky is going to get it just because yeah, the the story of No Man's Sky that it's continuing and that people are still playing it. And if, oh, this is a cool one: innovation and accessibility. Far Cry Six, Horizons, uh, Guardian of the Galaxy, Ratchet and Clank, and Val the Veil, Shadow of the Crown. I don't know what accessibility options, but like, I really like that a game like The Last of Us Two you could play if you're blind mm-hmm. almost. Yeah, I'm not sure what they are. Uh, I would assume probably Ratchet and Clank has a little bit. I yeah, I'm not too certain. Well, I'm I'm, I'm not really gonna throw my my hat in that ring, but uh, VR experience, VR AR experience, Hitman Three. I expect you to die two, Lone Echo two, Resident Evil Four, and Sniper Elite VR. Uh, I know Resident Evil 4 had a bunch of shit taken out from the original game, which I don't think is fair to, like, make it appeal for modern audiences, but, like, it took out, like, a lot of the context of the game. I'm a sucker for Hitman, and I've never played the rest. And Sniper Elite is a fun time. Yeah, I don't know. I I always wanted to try I Expect You to Die. It's kind of like you're a goofy, like, spy, and you're trying to, like, defuse something. Um, Hitman 3 doesn't have the support of the controllers, so you have to use an actual, like, PS4 controller to play. Oh, 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 I thought you meant, like, a Vive. Like, the, the not a Vive, but, like, the, the Move controllers. Yeah, you can use those. I don't know. I don't know about this one. Yeah, I, I haven't played them, so I can't really say. But for best action, there's Back for Blood, Chivalry 2, Deathloop, Far Cry 6, and Returnal. Kyle, we've still yet to play Back for Blood. I don't own it. It's on Game Pass. Oh, eh, I kind of want to do next gen. Um, Oh, that's right. I'm like, what do you mean? Because I forget that I'm the only person with an S. Okay. Um, Chivalry 2, I haven't gotten on the mail yet. Should be coming tomorrow. You told me that two days ago. Yeah, well, FedEx (laughs) sucks. Yeah. Uh, They stole my sneakers. Far Cry 6, haven't played. Returnal, haven't played. I heard Returnal's really hard to get into. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to vote for Deathloop just because it seems like... I mean, Back for Blood might win, but like Deathloop seemed to have a lot of action into it. And how time and like you can do shit. 
Mm-hmm. Well, best action adventure, the next the next pick is quite literally game of the year minus one. It's Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank, and Resident Evil Village. I don't think Psychonauts 2 will take this just because the combat is kind of eh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I went for Guardians. Um, I, I, I think Metroid will take this one. Probably. Yeah, I think it's either it's going to come down to Metroid or, or did you play this Metroid or no? No, I watched like 30 minutes of a stream and it looked neat, but I don't know if I'd like it. Best role playing cyberpunk monster hunter rise Scarlet Nexus. Sh- I hate this. I hate this name and I can never say it. Shin Megami Tensei five. Tales of Arise. Did mm. you play cyberpunk yet? I did. I still have and I will play it one day. I have nothing to say for this one just because, Yeah, you know. Next one? Best Fighting. Oh, son. Uh, Demon Slayer. K- Kimetsu no Yu. Just say oh Demon Slayer. God. Demon Slayer okay. fighting game. Thanks. A Guilty Gear. Mm, Melty Blood. Blood. Melty Blood. Great. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown. Uh, Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon, yeah. Uh, I've I've not heard of three out of the five, and I watched a ton of streams of Nickelodeon All Star Brawl. Best family. Oh, that's nice. It takes two Mario Party superstars, new Pokemon Snap, Super Mario 3D World, plus Bowser's Fury and WarioWare. Get it together. Everything on here is Nintendo except for one. Are we talking about, like, is this is a family game, or are we talking about, like, this is a game you can play with your family? What's the difference? Oh, I don't know. Uh, hmm. Uh, I'll probably go with Pokemon Snap. Did you play the new one? No. I think I really liked Super Mario 3D World when I had it on the mm-hmm. Wii U. Um... And I watched a stream of Bowser's Fury. Like, I watched, like, the whole thing. Like, it was, like, a three-part, three, three, part, three hour stream of just Bowser's Fury. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Superstar, Mario Party Superstar just seems like Mario Party, but... That good. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, not, it's not the car nonsense they had yeah. in the one game. It's actually, like, Mario Party. The only thing I don't like about it is that there's only five maps. Hmm. But I think I I want sure 3D that's World. In the old Mario Party, had five maps. Yeah, I know. But the way they the way they advertise this one was like, hey, we took a hundred of the best mini games from other Mario Parties. Mm-hmm. Like it's on a Switch cart. Like it's not like it's on a any an N sixty four cart. You know what I mean? Like you could you couldn't have put eight maps. I don't know. That's just me though. Best sim and sh- or strategy: Age of Empires. Evil Genius 2, Humankind, Inscription, and Microsoft Flight Simulator, baby. <laughs> I heard Microsoft Flight Simulator on a series of X and S is really fun. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And what, what Inscription? I thought so. Yeah, I don't really... Dude, I didn't realize how little came out this year. Do you think we're going to hit a point where it's just like games are coming out constantly? Like, once COVID's, like, done? Uh, no. No? Okay. I mean, there's been a lot of games coming out, just... No, no, I know, but I'm saying, like, big games that are just gonna be, like, bam, 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 bam. Do you think we're gonna get another 2007 out of this, or no? Probably not. Okay. Best sports are racing, F1 2021, FIFA 22, I want to flip these words, these letters... Forza Horizon 5, Hot Wheels Unleashed, and Riders Republic. If this is the new... Supposedly the new Forza game is really good. I might download it. It's on Game Pass, but I, I, I'm not... I don't play these games. Kyle, best multiplayer. Back for Blood, Knockout City, It Takes Two, Monster Hunter, New World, Valheim. What did you vote for on this? Uh, I, I'll vote for Knockout City. Fuck, dude, we sh- I sh- wish I would have talked about this at the beginning of the show. Knockout City's so good. I really like Knockout City. When I get some time, Kyle, 
We should play again. Yeah. <laughs> Content creator of the year, Dream, Fluzy, Fusey. I don't know any of these people other than Dream, Gallus, I Iba, and Grief G. I don't. I don't know, dude. Who'd you vote for? Uh, Fluzy. Do you watch her? What? No. Do you watch her? I don't watch then any why, of these people. Then why'd you vote for her? Because I don't want to vote for Dream. Okay, that's valid. Uh, best debut indie is an artful space. The Forgotten City, Kina, Kenna, The Bridge of Spirits, Sable, and Valheim. What'd you go with? Kenya. I want to see that one. I want to see most anticipated game. I know it. I know it's. I know it's going to win. Oh wow! Maybe I don't. I don't know. Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok, Horizons Forbidden West, the sequel to Legend of Zelda: The Breath Breath of the Wild. They don't even have a name for it. And Starfield. What do you think is going to take it? Elden Ring. Really? Absolutely. You think that's going to beat Zelda? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. The one I want to see the most on here is God of War. And then Starfield. But if you say so, I would have went with Zelda. Best esports, Kyle. What do you know about esports? Call of Duty. I mean, the only thing I know about esports is uh, farming sim. (laughs) Call of Duty, Counter-Strike, Counter-Strike Go, Dota 2, League of Legends, and Valorant. I don't. I don't care. We probably should the next one. Oh, dude, best esports. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna skip esports athlete. Best esports team. We could skip that too, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, do you think do esports or vote? sports? The coach? I'm I don't know esports coaches. Esport event? I don't. And that's it. That's everything. That's it. Every time I hear about esports, my first thought is like, who the fuck watches this? And then like the people that are in the tournaments are making millions of dollars if they win. So how do you feel about that, Kyle? Do you feel like your picks are going to win or? Uh, Yeah, there's a a lot of those games is something I enjoy and like. So there's nothing on there that's like, eh. Have you ever not liked a game? Probably. Uh, I I always blank on when everybody, anybody asks me if I like something or don't. Yeah. Uh, like, I mean, I, like, I'm like i not going to play League of Legends or... No, I know. But like, have you ever sat down with a game and had a visceral experience of like, this is just... <sighs> like, remember that Maleficent movie that you told me you couldn't stand? Yes. Do you Have you ever had that experience with a game? Hmm. Because when you told me you didn't like a movie, I was like, what? Uh, I don't know. There may have been. But I can't remember. Do you remember a game that you were just super bored by? Uh, yes. Um, I was super bored with Yakuza 0. Really? It just like was like, okay... Yes. All right. I'm reading. Okay. Okay. Punch. Punch. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. It just got to. I probably something crazy happens a little bit later on, but it was kind of just like boring. See, I, mean, I think it gets that's super crazy, and I want I'm totally down for the craziness that happens in later games. But like, I was begin the the startup of that was kind of like, all right, this is kind of boring. Would you watch a streamer play it? Uh, maybe, depending on streamer. the streamer. Yeah. See, I think for me, I get like when I get upset with a game, it's because like I'm bored more than anything because it's like I'm choosing to put my time into this, and the the last thing a game should be is not fun. Mm-hmm. Like I was having this conversation with a friend who loves Red Dead Two, and I was like, look at at the core of a game, it should be fun. And with Red Dead 2, I just didn't feel like I was having fun. And that's what made me upset with it was just, it's a game that is going to take you anywhere from 60 to 80 hours to beat. And I feel like I only had fun maybe on seven missions. 
Mm -hmm. Like that to me was for anyway, we're at that time of year again. I hope you guys are safe. Kyle, you have anything you want to say before I hit the outro? Uh, no, no. You sure? Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, just tune in to Papa's gaming thing on the Discord for some <laughs> updates, I guess. Because yeah. there probably will be. <laughs> join uh, join on in. Join the Discord. There's a link in the description below to the Discord. Uh, if you like the intro music, it's by Shane Ivers. And you can get it at silvermansounds.com slash free music for all of his heaters. If you would like, like I've been saying the entire episode, join the Discord Come talk to us. There is a link in the description below. Um, Kyle will update us. I'll ask questions for lore. There's also a link to my Twitter, the show's Twitter, and Kyle's Twitter. There's a link to the Patreon. There's a link to the Redbubble, where you can support us in any other way. Again, thank you to the Patreon. I believe that's everything. I love you. I hope you're safe. Do something fun this weekend. If you're in the States, Thanksgiving is coming up. I hope you enjoy. If you celebrate, I know there's a lot of people that have stopped celebrating the holiday. Uh, but if you do celebrate, remember that you should sit down and appreciate the people around you and where you are in life. And it might be hard right now, but it could be better tomorrow. Maybe. Hopefully. Um, that's everything I have to say for this week. Bye, Kyle. Bye, Kyle. <laughs> Atomic Radio Hour Podcast A Gulman Entertainment Production